Well, David McNally is with us, Norwich City's Chief Executive. David, if we could start at Upton Park on, on Tuesday night, clearly a lot of frustration from Norwich fans mm -hmm. after that result. Mm -hmm. A lot of anger as well that Norwich lost again to one of their relegation rivals. You were at the game. How were you feeling when that final whistle blew and Norwich had suffered what was an unfortunate defeat, but mm. looks quite a damaging one? Um, how was I feeling? Uh, really frustrated and disappointed. I th um, agree with most of what I think Seb said after the game. How did we lose that game? Um, I was sat in the stands 84 minutes at nil-nil thinking we'll be really disappointed with a nil-nil draw and a point because on every measure apart from the most important one which is goals uh, I feel that we outperformed West Ham and so disappointed, dis disappointing journey home um, really felt for the supporters that had made the effort on a on a work night, on a school night to get to Upton Park in their thousands again uh, which is a, a tremendous effort yet again from the, the Norwich City supporters. So I, I, I felt really disappointed. I, on reflection, uh, always try and wait for uh, the following day to arrive before you react to anything, but on reflection I felt that once again the performance was encouraging, um, but once again the result was dis disappointing. A lot of Norwich fans again were blaming the manager for that, looking mm. at substitutions. Do, do you hold Chris Hutton responsible for Norwich losing that game? Well, Chris is responsible and accountable for the performance of the first team. So, uh, in a way, he's you know he, he 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 he's responsible for every result. You know, he's football managers uh, are well rewarded, um, but with those great rewards become some huge requirements upon them to achieve the wins and the draws that we need to um, to firstly stay in the league and to secondly move up the table. So, um, um, Chris will be the first to accept that the buck stops with him, undoubtedly. That you know, it's uh, it's his job to put a team out that's good enough to win the game, and to ensure that the preparation leads to a good performance that produces the results. So yeah, of course, you know, first team results are down to the first team manager. Results haven't been good recently. They haven't been good for much of the season. You speak to fans. You know, a lot of them have lost confidence with Chris Hughes, and mm -hmm. they want him sacked. Mm -hmm. A straight answer. Is he going to be the Norwich City manager until the end of the season, come what may? Have you got that much confidence in him as a board? Well, the thing is with football managers that they are responsible for the results and they are responsible for the performances. Um, recently, I think those that watch us home and away would say the performances have been encouraging. Um, since the, I think the last time we had a debate like this on uh, uh, your colleague's show um, on the radio, we, since then we've played five games and we've only got five points um, but that's probably what we've achieved for most of the season, a point a game-ish. Uh, but we've played Hull City, played Newcastle, we've played Cardiff, Manchester City and West Ham. Um, in those games, in my view, for first half Newcastle apart, in those five games the performances have been encouraging. Um, would we have liked more points? Absolutely. Um, so I know that Chris is working really hard to, to, to do what we need to firstly stay in the league and secondly move up the table. He's 100% positive that we'll do that. Uh, and so he has the support of the club to go on and ensure that we get the points that we need to achieve those objectives. Um, as far as giving any certainty for, for Chris or for anybody else, it's a, it's a results business. And whether that's Chris Hutton as the football manager or myself as the chief exec or anybody else, we're paid to do our jobs. And for so long that we um, achieve what's required of us, then, then we'll stay and work. Of course we will. Um, it would be wrong at any level, whether it's the football manager, the CEO, or one of our colleagues across the business, to give any further guarantee. It'd be, it'd be delinquent almost to do that. And, all I would assure Norwich supporters is that we are watching it very carefully. The whole board is aware of the strength of feeling from the Norwich support. Um, as guardians of the, the business of the football club at this current time in our history, we have to do in a balanced way what we think is right for the football club. Um, what I would say about any change, if you're making any change, you have to be 100% sure that if you make that change, things will be will be better. And so in any consideration about any move for the football club, we take into account 
if we make this change right now, given the circumstances, are we guaranteeing that things will be better? And that's a question that we ask when we're debating those uh, big decisions for the football club. But, but can you guarantee that things will get better if you stay as you are? Because you're, you're quite right, I think, in saying that recent performances mm. have been better, but you also said it's a results business. Absolutely. And the results haven't been good enough recently. No, they, they haven't been good enough. And if, if you look at why we haven't got the results, we're not scoring goals. Um, uh, it's fair to say we're creating chances now. I don't think that that was what we would have concluded in the early part of the season. Uh, we were taking a few chances from a, a, a meagre return, of, sorry, a few goals from a meagre return of chances. Uh, but you know, West Ham game, how many glaring opportunities did we miss? Several. And you know, these aren't um, some pseudo stat that says that we had 30 shots on goal from distance. Sometimes that can happen in a game, as we both know, Chris, and there isn't one chance. There might be 30 attempts on goals, but not one chance. The other night, we had several clear-cut chances, and we didn't take them. Now, um, we all have to take responsibility, and the players, I have to say, in this instance, should um, put their hands up and say, we've, we've not taken some chances that the team have created. Equally, West Ham United, uh, Cardiff City, um, individual errors on all different parts of the, the football pitch are costing us dear. And, um, you know, there's an individual error in West Ham that cost us dear. Uh, Cardiff City, the equaliser. There were several individual errors that led to, probably three, that led to, a, led to an equaliser in a game that, if that hadn't happened, we would have gone on and won. Um, can we guarantee that things um, will get better? Of course we can't. But all I can say is that I know that everybody within Chris's team and the playing staff are committed and are working together to try and put things right. There's two or three games we've been to here this season at Carrow Road where people have been saying this is must win. Uh, if we lose this game, yeah. Chris Hutton probably loses his job. What's the truth in that? Has he ever been one game away from the sack while he's been Norwich manager? Well, I, I don't know because I don't think you'd ever look at it in that way. That you'd you'd take. You, you, I think I've been in football long enough, and I'm the world's worst loser, to know that immediately after a game isn't the time to do anything else other than go home close the curtains, switch the TV off and, and wait for the following day. Um, so there's never been any danger of any knee-jerk reaction. Um, in fairness to Chris, in each of those must-win games at home this year, must win as far as the media are concerned and, and maybe some of the supporters, which I accept, um, he's come up trumps uh, at home. Now. Uh, we are in a situation where we are too close for comfort to the bottom three and that needs to change. Um, and I know that having invested in the summer, the supporters expect us to be in a higher position, which uh, is a natural, I think, a, a natural conclusion that supporters may have given that this is our third year in the Premier League. But the facts are, last year we finished 11th. As far as our payroll was concerned, the facts are we had the 20th biggest. So we had the smallest payroll budget last year out of 20 teams. So not the 15th, not the 10th, not the 18th, we had 20th. Those are empirical facts. So we punched massively above our weight. Now I don't know where we're going to end up in the payroll table this year, but if we're not 20th, we'll be 19th or 18th. So what we have to do as a club, and by the way, it's not a complaint, it's the reality of economics within football, what we have to do is to continue to punch above our weight. And that's what we'll do. Now, are we in a fight? Absolutely. Is it a huge challenge? 100%, massive challenge, biggest that we faced. Did we expect to be in a fight in a, with a big challenge? Absolutely. Economics of the game, I think, split the league into two lots, of a, team, a group of eight at the top, and there might be two levels within that eight, and there's the rest of us. So we're in a group of 12. So um, uh, if you're top of that group of 12, which currently Southampton are, you're in ninth position. Now we are 16th at the moment, um, and we aim to get as, as high at the table as we can, and as close, as close to that ninth place as we can, which I think is probably at the upper level of our expectations. We would love to be in a position where the 
capital structure of this football club allowed us to, to be in the top eight, but that's some, some way off, we think. Um, so in our cluster of 12 clubs, we need to do as well as we can. And yet yeah, we are too close for comfort to the bottom three. And Chris has been told in no uncertain terms, get us out of that position and keep us out of that position and, and, and get our football club moving up the table. Um, but equally, we're three points off 10th. But can Chris Hewton change it? They're, they're, people talk about his substitutions a lot. They were in the spotlight the other night. I think he's made something like 63 substitutions this season. Norwich City are the only Premier League team that haven't had a goal scored by a substitute in the league this season. That, that doesn't suggest a manager that can, if plan A isn't working, that can go to plan B, does it? Well, game management is a key part of a football manager's um, role. It's a huge part. And we as football fans always have the benefit of hindsight. We all say that Snodgrass this or Pilkington that or Redman this or, or, or Redman this or Bennett that with the benefit of hindsight. Chris and other football managers have to make it in real time under the you know, huge pressure and um, intense scrutiny. In fairness, early part of the season, your colleagues in the media and supporters were saying, Chris doesn't make substitutions. That was one of the, the, the uh, accusations. He doesn't make them and he doesn't make enough. Um, there's a, this stat that you're using from um, a newspaper earlier this week about 63 substitutions, which means that he's made two and a half substitutions per game. Um, he put three substitutes on in the same game at the same time uh, at Cardiff. So I think he's trying different things. And if you look at the formation that he's used from the squad that he's got, um, he's used a variety of different formations. Um, again, with the benefit of hindsight, we can, we can scrutinise and criticise, can't we? How many supporters were saying to you on Canary Call and, and elsewhere, 442? Um, and they got 442 for a while. And I'm not so sure, as a football supporter, that that was the ideal formation for us at that time. Um, now, I'm going back to what's happened recently. Um, no question, results have been disappointing. And we are, we are, you know, from Delia across the rest of the board, we are as disappointed as anybody. But the last few games, the reality is um, the performances have been encouraging. And so what we need is we need to convert some of the chances that we've created to continue the good defensive work that we've done. I know we lost 2-0 the other night, but forget the second goal. If we hadn't allowed them to score that first goal through errors, then the second goal wouldn't have happened. We wouldn't have had everybody in their, uh, in, in their half, would we? Um, so uh, defensively, we've been a lot better recently. Clearly, at the other end of the pitch, we, we need to do better. And of course, scoring goals is about a collective team effort, so it's not just about your number nine. Um, but we do need a contribution from our strikers, that's for sure. Yes, given the, the lack of goals, a lot of fans were disappointed that a, an attacking player didn't arrive during January. You, Gutierrez came in, Yogo yeah. came in, neither of them known for their, their goal scoring qualities, yeah. although they'll, they'll play a part this season, yeah. no doubt. But how close did you come? Surely you were looking for a creative midfielder or a striker. Yeah, no, we, we were very close. Uh, we clearly needed another centre-half with Michael's mid-term injury. We needed another wide midfield player because we've had upwards of three in that position out injured at the same time this year. So we've had to, well, the, the cupboard's been bare and we've been uh, unfortunate with um, injuries in the same areas at times. So those are two crucial um, uh, reinforcements and we felt experienced players, uh, 95 caps for Nigeria, 22 caps for Argentina, uh, on a short term basis, knowing that the, both of the, the character of the men was um, first class, um, was better for us at this point than investing in a four and a half year contract for somebody of a lesser quality. So it was a call that we took and clearly in those positions there were other play players that we could have brought in, um, but we felt that they were the best. Uh, in, in those positions. Um, we were in the market for a number 10, um, a creative midfield player or somebody that can play, play just off a striker and we were very close to taking somebody from a huge club on loan of course. I think January is, for me, having been in the game many years now, January is about short term measures to try and ensure that the squad is complemented as opposed to any for me, wholesale reshaping of the squad. That should take place in the summer. 
Um, we were very close. What it needed at this huge club was for one of their players coming in to happen, and then we would have landed somebody to the end of the season who would have, who would have made a huge difference in that creative midfield area. Um, good news is that John is close. John is now training, and he is somebody that we've missed, and he's somebody that plays in that in that position too. And and of course, Wes is back in the fold, so uh, we've got two players, I think, now available for, available for us in February, who were not available for us in January. Um, Johnny might, fitness-wise, take a while, um, but we've got two creative midfield players that we didn't have at the start of January. You said a few moments ago that Chris Hutton has been told in, in no uncertain terms, that those are your words, that results need to get better. And we can all see that looking at the league table. Now, I've seen how you make managerial changes in the past. Yeah. Towards the end of Paul Lambert's reign here, while he was still in charge, you were saying, we've got a plan B, we know what we do. Is that the case now? Have you got a plan B? Do you know who you want the next manager of this club to be, whenever that may happen? I think um, what you'd have is, I think you have to be aware of the market and what's going on. I think it would almost be delinquent of a football club again to, to not um, be aware of potential candidates if, if, for instance, whatever reason, your manager left. And you know that could be either the manager leaves because he wants to go elsewhere, as in the case of Paul, um, who did brilliantly for Norwich City. Um, uh, but that decision was taken and, and, and we move on. Um, or, or if results aren't good enough, you have to, you have to be aware of who might be coming in um, to help. So I think what you do is, um, I think you, you're just aware of the market and, and who would be right for a club of Norwich City. So, so yes, if, if you needed to make a change now, you know who you could go and get? It, it wouldn't, well, it, you know, if, if, um, if we needed to make a change, and I think the average tenure of a Premier League manager is about a year and a half, isn't it? And is Chris in the top six or eight, longer serving? So if a change was necessary, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a case of, uh, of who are the contenders. It would be um, a review of, of what is required, where are we going, and um, who we felt was best placed to take this club forward. A final point then, as you know, we've said it already, a lot of Norwich fans don't think Chris Hewton has got what it takes to, to, to keep the team up in the Premier League. He's still in charge, so you clearly still believe he can do it. Tell the fans why. Tell the fans what Chris Hewton has got that you think at the moment will keep Norwich in the Premier League. Well, firstly, I mean, I'll go back to the point that I made that we finished 11th last year. Um, we had some luck. We had some bad luck throughout the season. And uh, we, we, you tend to finish in the position you deserve, is my view. And we finished 11th. And we had the smallest payroll. Um, no one's ever done that to the level that he did with the debt repayments that we had to make last year. It was an astonishing achievement. So he produced that. Um, and so his track record is that he can take Norwich City through to 11th place in the, in the Premier League. Clearly this year, the results haven't been good enough and they need to improve. We need everybody to get behind him and his team with 12 big games to come. Um, we're very lucky that we've got the best fans in the country. No doubt about that. They, they almost... Are, were as responsible for that point against Manchester City as the players were. And it's true that players bounce off supporters and supporters bounce off, off, off players. And we, and we need, needed them against Manchester City and they were fantastic here and the atmosphere was terrific. We need that six times again at Carroll Road and six times again away, from, away from, from home. And together with Chris working with, with the players, you can see, everybody can see, that they are together. There's a real spirit amongst the group. Um, the players are backing the management team and the players are playing for each other. So um, uh, you know, the odd suggestion that you know, he's lost the dressing room is a complete myth, as I think people closer to the club can actually see. So let's, let's all get behind Chris, board, everybody here to see how we can help him uh, achieve some success this year. You know, we could still finish in a, in a really good position. Um, Yes, of course, we need to start winning some games. And in, in order to do that, we need to score more goals. Um, but we're very confident that we can do that. David McNally, thank you for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you.